for this section, we'll be looking at um, Excel, specifically we'll be looking at Power Query in Excel. So um, some things to note, um, this is not um, a beginner Excel class. So it's expected that you um, to um, get the best from this section, right? So you have some exposure to Excel. So you know things like um, formulas in Excel, how the cell referencing works, and basically um, power pivots and stuff like that. So power query, power pivots, they, they just help you to better work um, smartly, right? You automate work and you can save a lot of time, right? Why carrying on manual tasks? Things that will take you hours, you can do that in a few minutes with Power Query and Power Pivot. So with that aside, let's um, get down to brass tacks. So um, quick introduction for those who don't know me, I'm Ubi here at Show, and I work as a data consultant. I also double as a data analyst career coach at Udacity. And my free time, I enjoy creating music, reading, listening to podcasts around technology. And I also do a little bit of um, painting. So let's um, delve into Power Query. So what's Power Query? So um, Power Query is a business intelligence tool and is available in Excel as well as Power BI, which you will see in subsequent sections. And Power Query allows you to import data from several sources. So this could be Excel files, it could be websites, it could be databases, PDF files, etc. So you can import data from myriad of data sources. And then when you import this data, right? Yeah, it's being recorded. So when you import this data, right, um, you can clean it, transform, and reshape your data as needed. With Power Query, you can um, collect, clean, and combine data from multiple sources like Excel, Facebook, websites, databases, amongst others. Then um, another thing about Power Query is it presents data in a graphical user interface. So um, you get to write little to no code. You just drag and drop. And under the hood, Power Query writes all the codes that you need to carry out your data cleaning tasks. So it presents data in a graphical user interface, agree. And this runs on a powerful formula language called M. So the formula language that drives Power Query is M. So I'll show us what M looks like, right? But it's basically a bit of um, a bunch of codes, right? That carry out. So as you drag and drop stuff on Power Query, right? The M code is being written under the hood by Power Query. And we'll see that in a bit. So if you look at this image here, right, this is a sample of um, the Power Query editor. So um, we'll see all those weapons in a bit, but this is what it looks like, right? You have file, home, transform, add column, and other different tabs. Now, why should one use Power Query? So the very first reason is Power Query allows you to extract data from nearly any source. So like we saw earlier, right? It could be Excel files, CSV files, PDF, text files, websites, databases, etc. Then another thing is um, in Power Query, right, you can connect to all those different data sources, right? Clean the data up, create your reports. And if your data source updates, maybe daily, weekly, monthly, as um, is scheduled, right? You don't need to go, go through all the cleaning steps again. You just need to click a button, refresh, and the new data sources, right? The new data points are added. They just update. They follow the same um, steps you've um, carried out before, right? You don't need to repeat your cleaning steps again. So it automatically refreshes and updates your data. So you just hit the button and it refreshes, right? It updates all the data that just came into the data source. So that's one great thing about Power Query. It's great at automating a lot of tasks, right? Data cleaning, transformation. You do it just once and subsequently just refresh and it updates. Then another reason to use Power Query is it helps you reshape and transform large amounts of data. So um, one drawback with working in Excel, right? You find out that there's a data limit. Once it gets to like millions of rows, you have some issues working with, with um, 
data in Excel, right? But in Power Query, you can work with several billions of rows. There are no data limits. So you can work with data, large amounts of data, clean it, reshape it to your needs. Then another um, easy thing to use Power Query is it involves little to no coding. So if you're one who doesn't enjoy writing lots of codes, then Power Query would be a cool tool to work with, right? You just use the GUI, you drag and drop. And um, possibly when doing some um, custom transformation, you might need to understand how, power, how how the M language works, right? Remember, M is the um, formula language for Power Query. So you might need to know a bit of M to do some complex transformation. But for basic cleaning tax, just drag and drop and you should have what you want. And lastly, if you're looking to pick up um, Power BI um, expertise, right, then Power, Power BI is also built on Power Query. So if you learn Power Query in Excel, it's also transferable to Power BI, right? Because Power BI is also, um, Power Query is a key component of Power BI. So if you learn Power Query in Excel, then automatically you've understood how Power Query works in Power BI also. So these are some reasons um, to use Power Query. Now, at this point, I'll um, open up my Excel um, documents. Just give me a second. So let me share my full screen. So I assume, I assume you can see my Excel um, sheets, right? So this is um, the Excel um, sheets is how it looks like. And let's um, look at how the Power Query um, editor looks like in Excel. So on the Excel um, um, sheet, right, you have several tabs, boom, insert, et cetera. So when you come on to the data tab, right, the data tab, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So you come on to the data tab, that's this tab right here. This data tab right at the top left um, area where you have get and transform data. So let me annotate. So at this area right where you have all this stuff, right? Get data, etc. That's power query in um, Excel, right? All those points, all those tabs, get data, see several sources, text, like CSV, web, etc. This power query in Excel. So if I come onto this um, icon here, right? So I come onto this drop down where I have get data, and I click on this drop down here. You see it shows different sources, right? So from file, you can see Excel workbooks, CSV, XML, etc. Databases, you can see different kinds of databases: SQL, Access, etc., Postgres, etc. Then from Azure, right? You see different data sources also from online services, other sources. Then you can also combine and also um, do some custom um, inputs. So this Power Query in, um, in Excel, right? So what I can do is um, I can just open a random, let me just do launch Power Query Editor. So on this, um, on this sheet, right, I have some sample data. I'll come to this in a bit. But before that, I'll just launch Power Query Editor. So data gets data, right? I come down here and I click Launch Power Query Editor. When I click on this, it opens up Power Query. So you can see my screen, right? The Power Query Editor is coming up. So currently there's no data here, right? So it looks blank. So what I can do is I'll close this up and I'll try to bring in this data now into Power Query. So let's see how it looks like, I'm gonna do this. So I come on here, this is my um, sheet, right? It has this data. 
So what I can do is um, I want to import this data into Power Query, right? I could work with this same sheet, but I'll just create a new blank sheet. So a blank whole book, right? I'm making a new Excel file, a blank whole book, and this is called book five. So this is a blank Excel workbook. Now I want to bring in this file that we have here, right? This file, I want to bring this into um, Power Query. And note the name, it's called dirtydata.xlsx. So I, I go into the new Excel file that I created, book five, right? And I go into the data tab and I come down to get data. So I want to import what kind of data, an Excel workbook. So I'll come on to file and you can see this option, right? Excel workbook. Depending on the kind of file I want to um, import, I'll go to that kind of file, right? So in this instance, I'm importing an Excel workbook. So I choose Excel workbook as my source. So I'll go into the folder where I have that data, right? So in a folder called data professionals, this I have an Excel folder. In here, I have um, common power query transformations, and this is the file dirty data.xlsx. So I open this up. So this is loading up the power query editor, right? So this is the power query navigator. So this is showing me um, this is my file, and this is the sheets. Just to, just to confirm, right? You go into this file, this is called what sales sheets, right? Where you have this data. So this is the data file on the sales sheets. That's what we are currently at. So back to the Power Query Editor, this is a sales sheet. When I click on this, you can see a sample, right? You can see a preview of the data. So you're seeing the different um, columns, right? And data points that are there. So this data, right? Let's look at the data on the sheets, the actual sheets. So this data, right, is, um, is in, in an unstructured format. If you look at how, it, how it's structured, right, you have um, sales for a particular day, 2018-0101, salesperson, the person's name, and then this is the employee ID, right? And then you have regions, not east, south, west, and different values, and total for each region, right, like this. The next day, you have data for employees, employee number, regions, and values in total. So for each day, you have a subset of data like this. And this does not make sense, right? But if you're trying to analyze this, this is not in the right structure. This is um, what we call unstructured data data. I need to clean this up to make it um, analyzable. So I go back to my power query editor, right? So if this was clean in the right structure, I would just load this into Excel. But we want to carry out some transformations and clean this data up, right? So um, before I go on, let me cancel this. Before I go on, right, our end goal is to go from this current structure, right? This data data current structure to something like this, right? So you have salesperson on one column, employee ID, date, region, and sales. This now is the clean data. With this now, I can analyze this. I can create the reports, look at salesperson, employee ID, dates, et cetera, and their sales, right? But currently in this format, these are structured. So our goal is to go from something like this, right? And go to this. So if you're working with normal Excel, right? What you start doing, you start doing some manual work. Maybe I'll come on here. I'll make a new column called salesperson, right? Something like this. I'll make a new column called salesperson, employee ID, date, region, sales, right? And then manually, I'll start putting all this data in the name of the first person, the ID. If you look at how this thing, how this thing is structured, right? That would be a lot of work. I'll bring out this name, bring out the ID, and then I'll. So you, you might you might, you might make make mistakes, right? Because you're doing some manual stuff, so there's a, a high likelihood that you can make mistakes. Or power query, right? You can automate this stuff and reduce the um, chance of making mistakes, right? So let's go back to power query, right? So what we did earlier, get data from file, Excel workbook, right? Dirty data. So I open this up and I click on the um, sales sheet, right? Sales sheets. 
And then we want to make changes. So I'll choose transform data. So I click on transform data. This now opens up the Power Query Editor. So this Power Query Editor, this is what it looks like, right? Power Query Editor. So before I, I go on to data cleaning proper, let's try to get familiar with the interface. So you have this home tab, right? Then, um, so you have refresh preview. This, help, this is just um, trying to update the data source, right? So possibly there are new data points. When you refresh this, those new points will be added here. Remember we said our power query, you can automate and um, refresh with one button, right? So refresh preview. Just checks the data source and tries to introduce um, the new data. So um, what I can do next, um, you can see several tabs, right, which we will go through in a bit. But then the home tab, right, is just showing you um, sample of your data. And then you have some tabs, right, um, advanced editor, manage, we'll see all this in a bit. The next tab is a transform tab, right? So this is where you can apply transformations to your data. If you want to transpose, reverse, group by, and other kinds of transformations, you carry that out here. Then you have the add column tab. This is similar to transform tab, except that with the add column tab, right? Any transformation you carry out, any change you carry out, right? Anything you do here will result in creating a new column, right? That's the difference with transform and add column. So transform tab, when you carry out a change, right? You just change that column in place. But the add column option, right? When you carry out a change, it creates a new column with that change, right? Then you have the view tab. So with the view tab, right? You can just change um, how you see um, your table, right? For example, currently you have this formula bar, right? What I can do is when I check this box, formula bar, it goes up, right? When I bring it back, you can see the formula bar. And this formula bar, right? I mentioned the formula language earlier, M. What you have here now is the M language, right? This is M language. So table.transform, et cetera, et cetera. We'll come to these in a bit. So you also have um, view. So you also have some other options, right? Um, advanced editor, query dependencies, et cetera. So, um, Another important part is the right-hand side, right? So here we have query settings, right? And then applied steps. So this showing you, right? Every change you make, right? Power Query would um, show that step here. So you can go back and forth between your different transformations. So let's look at the very first step here, right? Source, source. If you look at the formula bar, right, this is just showing you what um, the source for our data, right? So Excel.workbook, this is an M, M formula trying to get data, right, from this source. So this is the Excel file, dirty data.xlxs. And this is, the, this is the part of my laptop, right? The source. So the part of my laptop, this is just trying to get that file and import its contents in Super Query. Then on this file, right, there are how many sheets are there? Just one sheet. So navigation, it now navigates towards the sales sheets, right? Item sales, the sales sheets, right? And then it brings in this data. So it's bringing in the sales sheet data, right? And then it's trying to, so um, Parker is, is um, kind of smart, right? It tries, it tries to just predict what are the, the um, transformations that are needed. So if you look at the first column, right, column one, column two, column three, column four, column five, in our data sets, right, um, the way it's structured, they are not defined columns, right? You just have this one column here, right? They're not defined columns. So Power Query is just trying to um, predict the kind of changes we want to make to this file. So on this next step now, right, promoted headers. So this is empty, right? So it looks at the first row. This is, is a value here, sales for 2018-01-01. So Power Query is saying, possibly this is a header, right? Since these are empty, it tries to promote the headers, make the first row the headers. So promote the headers, right? It tries to um, predict the header for this value. Then um, this is actually correct, right? It tries to fix this. And the next step, it tries to change the type, right? 
So in Power Query, you have the option of fixing the data type for each column. So on this column, right, you can change the type to decimal, currency, whole number, etc. So Power Query tries to predict the data type for each column to the next step by chain types. It tries to um, predict the type, this text, etc. So um, because of our data is, 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 is kind of messy, right? Power Query is not really doing um, very great at predicting the changes we want to make. So what I would do is I would take off this chain type step, right? Because um, that's not what I want to do. I'll take this off, right? This step also, I'll take it off. I'll just go back to the actual data um, structure, right? This is the original structure, this first row, everything else. So I'll try to use um, logic now, right? To transform this to the right form. So first things first, I want to do, um, if you look at the, the, the data, um sheet right this very first value is what sales for a particular day 2018-01-01 so everything from row one to row seven right is um related to what this day 2018-01-01 right so everything here right is related to 2018-01-01 this this is this, this a sales persons that made sales. These are the sales in different regions, right? Same thing too, from row nine to row 15, right? Everything here relates to 2018, 02, right? That's how it's structured. So just broken down for each time period. So using, the, using these rights, we can try to structure our data in the right way. So let's um, see how we can go about that. So back to my power query editor. Um, what I can do is, I want to make a new column, right, for just the dates alone. So sales for 2018, sales for 2018, 0102, 0103, 0104, et cetera. I want to make a new column for just those dates, right? So what I can do is um, on the transform tab, right, there's an option to split columns. So if you come here, right, this option here, you have the option to split columns. So you can split a column by a delimiter number of characters, positions, lowercase to uppercase, et cetera. So in our case, right, if you look at the, the cells that contain the dates, right, sales for, there's a colon, then the dates, right? The next one also, sales for, there's a colon, then the dates, right? Sales for, a colon, then the dates. There's kind of a structure, right, on how the dates values are being imputed. Sales for a colon, then the dates. So we can use that, um, this um, feature, right, the delimiter. So the text sales for and the dates, they are separated by delimiter, which is the column. So I can use that to split this column, right? So I'll click on this column, right? And come on to split column and choose my option. Alternatively, I could do a right click, right? And come down to split column also. So either of those options, right, work. In, in, in Power Query, you can do the same thing in different ways, right? So using this option, split column, I choose by the limiter, right? So this opens up um, the split column um, window, right? So I want to split by what value? So currently by default, you have a space here, right? I click on this drop down. Instead of space, I'll choose the, the limiter I want, which is colon. So I choose the colon, right? And you have ad, ad, um, so you have option to split by leftmost, rightmost, each occurrence. So this is useful if you have for, if I have if I had multiple colons, right? So I would choose we have to use the leftmost one or the rightmost one or each occurrence, right? In our case, there is just one um, colon, so any of them would work in this instance. So you have advanced options, right? But we we'll need to go into all this. This also. Nice to do read it as none and then hit OK. So let's see what happens. So look at the um, apply step section, right? Just pay attention to that. Anything that I make would affect that um, area. So once I click OK, currently I have just source and navigation, right? Once I hit OK. So you see in um, a new step is added, right? Split column by delimiter. So we went from this, right? This is actual data sales for. The next step, right, once we did that split, you can see 
we now have a new column, right? That contains what the dates. So using this column, right, it has splits and made a new column for us, which is the dates 2018, 01, 01, etc. So let's let's go back to the step. So you look at what we have, right? Only those columns that only rows that have columns, right? They have columns as as splits, column one, column nine, and column seventeen, right? In the other rows, Power Query cannot see any column, so they are left as they are. So this is what happens, right? It splits using the column and makes these new values 2018, 01, 01, 01, 01, etc. So this looks great, right? But then you can still um, make further changes. So remember what I said earlier, right? Everything from column one to column seven, right, is for this particular date. Everything from column nine to column 17 is for this date. So um, in Power Query, there's an option to fill down, right, fill down. So I can fill every value, every value, right? So this column now, I fill down. So what fill down does is that it looks at the first non-value, the first non-blank value. In this case, that's 2018-01-01. When I fill down, right, this value would fill all the null values until it gets to the next non-blank value, right? So in essence, when I do fill down, all those null values will be replaced by this 2018-01-01 until it gets to the next non-blank value, 2018-01-02. Then all the null values here now will be replaced by 2018-01-02. Just like that, it continues in that sequence, right? So let's see it in action. So I click on this column and we can use this fill option here, right? Fill down, or you can right click also and use the fill option. Either of those work, right? So I, what I would do is, um, so if you notice, right, after our change, Power Query added a new step that the chain type um, is trying to predict the, the, the data types of the columns, right? So this is something that is just programmed. It tries to just predict data type, but you can take this off. It's not really important, but you'll leave it there. So I come on here, right, and then do my fill down. So fill and then fill down. So you see what happens, right? 2018-01-01, it fills everything until it gets towards O2, right? And then every, all the null values here now, let's go back to the previous step, right? From column two to column eight, we are now previously. When we fill down from two to eight, they are now filled with words, O1, O1, 2018, right? And so on and so forth. So that's a fill down option. So we are able, we've been able to fix this date um, column, right? We'll fix this date column. So now back to column one, we also want to make a new column, right? If you look at our clean data, right? Our end goal, a column for employee ID, right? Column B, employee ID. So let's try to make that also. So I come back here and the same logic, right? We'll try to split this column. So on this rules where you have employee name and ID, right? Each of them, there is a left parenthesis between the name and the ID. Mark, parenthesis, right? One, three, three, six, Jane. So we can use that, right? All the name, the same thing. So we can use that to split this column and extract the IDs to a new column. The same logic, right? I right click, come down to split column and choose by the name there. So this, this is quite different, right? In that when you look at the options, right? You don't have um, the parenthesis as any option, column, comma, et cetera. There's really no um, parenthesis here. So what we can do is we can click on custom and then type it in ourselves, right? So I come on here and then I type in the left parenthesis, right? Split at the same way, right? Only one left is here. So anyone can work. But if you have multiple left parenthesis, you can use what left most or right most depend on the arrangement, right? So this works for us. Just make this none and hit OK. So let's see what happens, right? So it makes a new column. So we've gone from this, right? Look at the previous step. We've gone from this, right, to this. So we'll split this column, right, based on the left parenthesis. 
So we are getting close, right? We have the IDs here. But now the issue is that we are having the right parentheses in this column, but that has not been dead. I just want 1769. I don't want the closing parentheses. So I click on this column. What we can do is we can use um, a transform um, option called replace values. So we will place the right parentheses with an empty value. And that's equivalent to deleting that value. So I will do a right click here and I come on to replace values, right? So I choose this. So notes, right, on this column I'm working on, I clicked on it, it has a green color, meaning that it's highlighted. So I right click on the column, right, and click on replace values. So what I want to replace what the right parenthesis, right? So I type down in here, replace with nothing, just take it off, right? I hit okay. And you see, right, we went from this to this, right, is now off. So this is looking um, a bit better, right? But then on this column one, there are some things that we don't want. What I want here is the employee name, right? So this value is sales for salesperson, total, no, sales for salesperson. I don't need them, right? I just want the names. So what we can do is we can filter this column. So I come on here, click on the drop down, right? So just like your normal Excel interface, you can filter out values. So here I'll filter out no, I don't want no, I check it off, right? All these are names. I don't want the sales for, I don't want salesperson, I don't want total. I want just names in this column. So I hit OK. And you can see it's now um, a bit um, improved. You can see just names here, James, etc. So you're making good progress. So one thing you can notice is that on the name column, right, some of the values are in lowercase. You have James lowercase. You also have James lowercase. You have David lowercase. But other ones are in um, proper case, right? Mark, Tom, etc. So what we can do is we can try to capitalize all the words. It will be in one format. So I can do a right click and I come on to transform, right? So you can lowercase a column, uppercase. In this, in this, in this um, um, context, right? I want a proper case. The first letter will be in capital, in caps. The rest will be in lowercase, right? So I'll choose capitalize each word, this option. So let's see what happens when we choose this. Click on this. And you can see, right, all those lowercase names, James, from this, right, from lowercase, we've gone to what? This uppercase, James, right? So that, 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 that looks cool. So I think um, the name column is cool. The employee ID column is cool also. The dates also looks great too. So one thing we want to do, if you look at the clean data form, right, we have a column for region. Let me use an update. We have a column for region, right? And a column for sales, right? But in our current um, file on Power Query, right, look how we have, we have each region in one column. So you have um, this one region, these are one region, another region, another region, another region, right? But what we want to have is we'll have probably just one column that has the region names, and then their values will be in one column. So this is called on pivoting, right? So let me show you what that looks like. So you come on here, right? So when you're trying to unpivot values, right? You unpack attribute value pairs that represent an intersection point of new columns and we orient them into two flattened columns. So just to explain the big grammar there, right? You have this data now, A1, A2, A3. These are three columns, right? Column A1, column A2, column A3. And you have what their values down there. This could be numbers, etc. Now what I want to do is I want to have A1, A2, A3 in just one column, right? And then all the values here now, their corresponding values will be in another column. So we've gone to three columns, right? So two columns, whereby all the columns in the first table, right? They, are, they have their own column now with all the values there. And all the values now are in what's another column. So you're going from a white table, right? A white short table to a thin long table, right? 
And these kind of tables that work best in data models, they are very fast compared to where you have several columns. The more columns you have, the slower your data model will be, right? So it's best to have thinner, narrower, and longer tables compared to wider tables, right? So that's what we'll try to do. So instead of having each um, region, um, all the regions, right, north, east, west, south, we'll try to have everything now in one column, right? So what we can do is, before we do that, let's try to name our columns. So column one, I'll call this employee name. And then column two, I'll call this employee ID. And this column will be called dates, right? Then for these ones, I'll just reference the source and try to get the actual column names. No, this is not a file, this file. So north, east, southwest. Okay, cool. So north, east, southwest. So I'll call this north. north. And I'll call this east, right? North, east, southwest. North, east. And I'll call this south. And I'll call this west, right? Cool. So these are the four columns, not I hold shift and click on west, right? This highlights these four columns. So this four columns, I want to turn it into two columns such that one column will be region and it contains north, east, southwest. And the second column will be what? Their corresponding sales values, right? So what I can do is, is I highlight this, right? So you can do this with either the transform tab, right? On people columns, right? Or I could do the same thing. You know? I could do the same thing, right? I do a right click and choose on pivot column, right? So for this on pivot column, where right, you have three options on pivot columns, on pivot, on pivot other columns, on pivot only selected columns. So on pivot columns, right? When you, when no column is selected, this will on pivot all the columns in the table. Other columns. So currently I've chosen four columns, right? If I choose this option, then Power Query will pivot other columns except this four that I choose, right? The last option on pivot only selected columns. This on pivots only the four that I selected, right? So this is what I want on pivot only selected columns. So I choose this and let's see what happens. So we've gone from this, right? Four columns. So not what happened, right? North, east, south, west, right? They are now what's in one column. So you have what's north, east, south, west, right? And their corresponding values are now here. So now I have two columns instead of four columns, and this works perfect. So I'll name this region and I'll call this sales. Sales, right? So I think our data looks clean. You have the employee name, employee ID, dates, region, and sales. So remember I showed you that, right? Data types. So this is text, right? ABC is referring to text. That's correct. ABC also is text. It's also correct. These dates, right? You have dates. So this is date. That's, that's the icon for dates. This is text also. Now this sales, right? This should be currency. So I'll change this. Currently showing general formats. I'll change to currency. So I can choose currency, right? It's not in the proper formats. So I have my clean data. What I can do next is to load this into Excel, right? So I come out to the home tab. I have the option to close and load. So you can close and load to, right? Close and load to Excel file. So um, when you choose close and load to, for example, you have the option of saving this um, stable, right? In Excel data model such that I won't see it on my Excel sheet, right? It'll be saved in data model, but I can use the data there to create um, tables and pivot tables and pivot charts and stuff like that. So we'll see that in subsequent sections. So for now, I want to load to my Excel sheet. So I'll just choose close and load. And this loads my table, right, into Excel. So you can see the employee name, employee ID, dates, region, and sales. So now I can use this to make a pivot table and analyze. So you can see we went from this, right? Went from this to this, right? 
and this is automated such that the next day, if someone comes here and makes an update, right? I just come here and refresh and it updates. Before that, let me just make a simple pivot table. So insert pivot table. I just choose this table. No, and just this table is called what? Just give me a second. It's called table design. It's called sales. Cool. So insert pivot table. Table is called sales, right? Existing worksheets. And this worksheet location, just put it somewhere here. And I'll put it somewhere here. And okay. So this is my pivot table, right? And I can look at, for example, I can look at um, sales by region, for example, region and sales, right? For example, so I can see for each region the sales, right? Etc. I can do that cool things. So let's do a sample scenario, right? So the last data was updated on what's 2018 01 07, right? 01 06 01 07. So let us assume that the next next day, right? We have data for a new day. So I copy this control C and I come somewhere here and paste that data, right? So I'm assuming this data for um 08 by the next day, 08. The same people, or I'll just uh, inflate a couple numbers. Yeah, I'll do this 34,000, for example. I'll do some changes in some places 23,999, 23567. Just randomize the data, right? It's 234713. Just add random data in some places, right? So to get the actual sum, I'll just do equal to sum of these values, right? And enter. I just drag it across the actual sum, right? So I just randomize the data points, right? So I have a new day, right? 2018-01-08, right? And maybe I have a new person called Obina, for example. Right, enter. So note, note, right, let's come back to the sheets, right? Note that currently, in my test person, right, there's nobody called Obina here, right? Not our total currently, 78,000, 785,653, right? So I've made an update for a new day here, right? As you mean that the person that makes this update comes here, puts a new data here, right? So I save this file, file, I save this file. So let's come back to this table now, right? That I've created here. All I need to do is I come here, I, I do a right click and refresh, right? Refresh this. So it's showing one in background query, right? It's done when the query. Let's come down here now to the salesperson. And you can see what's Obina is now what added here. Can you see? It? Right. So this will be now. This is a new day. Um and it's scroll down. This is 08, right? 08. And you can see Obina here, right? And, it, uh, and when you scroll up, right, so our pivot table is not yet updated, right? So what I can do is I can right click here also and refresh. Currently, it's what, 785653. Right click here and refresh, right? And it's now updated, right? With the new day, it's now up about 1,060,027. So this is part query, right? We have, we have been able to go from this, right, to this while also having an automated report such that we just refresh, right, and your updates. So this and um, showing us some common transformations in um, Power Query. So um, I know you might have some questions, right? I'll take them after we go through what we're doing. So let's look at something else, right? So let me assume I have a folder, right? I have a folder. I have a folder of data, of sales data, right? So this um, folder of sales data, right? These are all Excel files, right? So different months, April 2019, August 2019, December, etc. These are all different Excel files. But the, the thing here is that I want to make a report using all those files, right? So imagine if I had like 1,000 files, or 2,000 files or 10,000 files like this. So every every month, right, 
the person in charge of this report just comes in here and pastes the data for that month, right? Every month, just like that. So these bounds will increase every month, right? So if you're using your typical Excel method, right? Possibly what you do is you try to make a new sheet where um, you copy all these tables, right? In these files. Let me open a sample file for April, for example. So if I open April up, this is what April looks like. Right, this is what April looks like. And then put it in 10. And yeah, just there. So this is what April looks like, right? So let me um, expand this. This is what April looks like, right? So you have a this column, you have cross sales, discounts, and costs, right? So if I if I to um work with all those files, let's say there are one thousand of them, right? Manually, what you do is you open all the one thousand files, then you create one Excel file, then you just copy and paste from each of them. So I come in here and paste the one for March, paste the one for me, paste like that, right? Or maybe if you're very advanced with Excel, you can try to use Excel macros and do something similar, right? But then that's um, um, involves coding, right? And it might get complex and stuff using macros. So Power Query, right? We can create a simple custom solution. So just to show us, right, that all the files are similar. Currently, I have April open. If I open for September, for example, you see that's the exact same format, right? Date, cross sales, discount, and costs. Same thing here too, right? You have four columns also. Dates, cross sales, discount, and costs, right? So let me close this files. So we understand the scenario, right? So once we create the reports using all the files for all the months that we have, and they could span to thousands of files, right? So the key thing here is that all the files have the same format, just that they're for different months. That's a little different, different months, right? For the same format, date, cross sales, discount, and cost. So I'll close this file also, right? Let me save. So what I can do here is I'll make it a new file, just to isolate our different work streams. So I come on here and make a new workbook, right? A new blank workbook. And in here, right, I want to make a report that contains all the files in this folder here, right? One, two, three, four. I think they're about, oh, they're about 10 months here. So let's see how we can do that. So I come to my new workbook and the same drill, I come on to data. I come on to get data. And in this instance, right, previously we had an Excel workbook, but now we'll use the option for a folder. So you can connect to a folder of data, right? Given that they have similar um, column arrangements, column names, right? You can use a folder, right? Import from a folder. So I click on the folder option from the file and I choose a folder option. And I'll come on to the folder where I have those files, right? I think that file is called Sales 2019. So I choose this folder, Sales 2019, and hit open. So before, before I go further, right, let me show um, or some, what we're trying to do. So we are trying to append tables, right? And appending means that um, you have two or more queries or tables and you combine them such that all the rows in each of these tables, right? So let's say I have two tables, table A, table B, they have 10, 10, 10 rows each. When I append them, my final table will have what, 20 rows, 10 from table A, 10 from table B, right? But then your columns will stay the same. So the same number of columns, but the rows will increase. So when you have 10 tables, right, the rows will increase or the same columns will remain. So in picture, right, you have three tables, one, two, three, with the same columns. So if you look here, right, one, two, one, two three, four, they all have six rows each. When you append them together, right, the results in a longer table, the same number of columns. So the same columns are, are maintained A, B, C. Just that you're just increasing what you have, putting this second table under first table, putting third table under the first two tables, right? So you increase the number of rows, but the columns will stay the same. That's how a pen works. That's what we are trying to do here, right? So we're trying to combine those several Excel files for those months, such that the same column will remain, right? The exact same column remain 
just that all the months now will stack them right on top of each other. So you could combine directly, right? Or load. But I like to just do a transform, right? I come on to transform. So these are all the files, right? From it, um, the first file to the second file. So here, what I can do is, um, let me see. So I can choose. So I think um, the, the, the files, right, they, they contain the, the month's name, right? But in some instances, if the file itself, they don't contain the month's names, right? What I could do is I will choose the column that, this, this column right name of the files, it contains the name of the months. So using this, I can identify which months those data belongs to, right? But in our case, if you look at the Excel file, right, it contains the dates there. So with that, I can get the months. So I'll click on this content column. I do a right click. I'll remove other columns, right? I don't need those other columns, just remove them. Then I'll click on this arrow here, right? This is just to combine the files. So all those Excel files in that folder, append them together, right? Combine them together. So I click on this arrow. Then under the hood, Parker writes some M code to carry that out, right? Let's see what the final result looks like. So it's making parameters, right? So let me see what this looks like. So these data rights, dates, cost sales, discount cost, right? So I'll just choose a sample file, right? And just inspect it. So dates, cost sales, discount cost, right? Et cetera, the same thing. Just choose a sample file. Then I hit okay. So let's see what happens. Now I hit okay. So back will carry some transformations under the hood, right? And try to combine these files together. So if you look at all those folders, right, it's showing you all the stuff that Parker did. It created a parameter, a sample file. Using the sample file, you're going to apply a custom function to it, right, to combine the files together. So this is a sample file that we used. And then it created this query, right? So let's confirm if it works. So if I come here, right, and click on the dates, for example, So if you look here, right, it contains several months. So this spans from January 2019 down to March 2020, right? So you can see that um, this has combined all the data together. So currently, if you look down here, right, we have we have four columns. Look down here, you have four columns and four, five, six rows. It's a final table after combining all those files together, right? So what I can do is I'll just name all this, I'll call it all sales. I'll rename the query, call it all, all sales, right? All sales. So I think data looks clean, right? This column, cross sales, these in, these, um, okay, I can make, make it to be currency, right? I gotta make it to be currency, replace current, and discount also. I make it to the currency, so we have to use the stretch. Make it to the currency. Replace currents. Make it currency also. So I think that's all. So with this, I can load my data, right? Close and load into Excel. So this contains data, right? For all the different um, months. January, February, March 2020, and January down to December for 2019. So if you look at um, this, right, the same thing from January 2019 down to what's the last 2020 months now, March 2020, the exact same files, right? We are combined. So this is how you can append files, right? Given that they have the same number of columns and the same column names. Even if the column names were different, right? When you append them, you get errors in some areas. Maybe you see no values on an extra column. So this is how you can append values, right, from different um, files. So um, let's do um, 
let's look how we can connect data from websites now. So let's give it, let, let's give it, give, give a scenario, right? Let's give a scenario where um, a scenario where you are employed as um, you are employed as a data analyst, right? For a hotel chain in Africa, so the, the, this hotel it operates in different um, cities, right? In Africa, maybe Lagos, Accra, Nairobi, Kampala, etc. Right. So as data analysts, your um, one of your roles is to um, provide um, the different um, different hotels. Right. You have a display that shows the um, weather conditions right for the next two weeks so every day um people can come and look at the, the the display and just um understand what the weather would look like if they would go out an umbrella or not right that's that we're trying to do that scenario we're trying to create a report right that shows you weather forecast for the next 14 days All right that's what we're trying to do So um, for these rights, what I can do is um, I'll make a new Excel file. So let me create uh, a new Excel file, new common here. So I'll make a new Excel file for this file, new blank book, right? So um, for this scenario, we're looking at four cities, Lagos, Nairobi, Kampala, and Accra. I want to create a, a report so normally, right, what one can do is you do a manual report, right? So maybe you have data for, you have an Excel file, you pull all the cities for the next 14 days, and then you go online, you Google, right? Weather forecast for, for Lagos, you copy and paste, right, manually. The next day, the same thing. So every day you're copying and pasting, copying and pasting, copying and pasting, right? But let's say I can automate this such that we can have what just a refresh button, and you can even automate how you refresh with VBA, right? Without touching anything, you refresh every day. That was also possible. But let, let, let's try to just make this um, smarter, right? Using Power Query. So let's go on to a web page. Um, let's go on to a web page. Um, I have this Give me a second. Let's come on to a, a web page, right? So what's our goal? We're trying to forecast. Um, so weather forecasts, forecasts 14 days, Lagos, right? Lagos. So I have this website. Let me check out this website, Lagos, 14 day weather forecast. So I open this up and let's see what we have there. So I have this. Cool. So I have this, this sample table here, right? Two week extended forecast in Lagos, Nigeria. So I have a day, the temperature, the weather, what it feels like, wind, humidity. I think this looks this, this good, right? So I'll, I'll copy these websites, just make copies of it and just filter for different cities. So I come on here to a new tab and here I'll search for Accra. So search for city or place. I'll search for Accra here. Yeah, Accra, Ghana. So I choose this. And this shows me the same data, right? Accra forecasts for the next 14 days, Accra. I go to a new tab, search also. So now here I'll put Nairobi, Kenya. My forecast, right? Nairobi, Kenya. So I put this here. And I have a similar, so it's the same website, right? So I expect to have the same table structure. The exact same structure. That's perfect. Then the last one I'll do. Kampala, Uganda. So Kampala, Uganda. So I do that here also. Yeah, cool. So here I have a weather forecast, right? For Kampala, Uganda. Awesome. Yeah, so what you do normally, right? You might come here, you look at the day, right? You copy it on Excel. If you have a, a, a day table on Excel, temperature, weather, et cetera. Then you come on here and start copying manually and doing stuff like that, right? So um, let's see how we can use Power Query to automate this. So I go into my new file, right? So I'll start with Lagos. So remember we said that Power Query can get data from different sources. 
websites inclusive. So I'll come on to Lagos um, and copy the URL, right? Control C, I copy this and go back to my Excel file. And on here, data tab, right? You can get data. So if you look at it, you see from text CSV, from web, right? So I can choose the website to get data from. So I choose web. If you have a different Excel um, um, view, want to get data, other sources, right? You see from web also. So you should see that option too. So I choose from web, right? And here on the format option URL, I come on here and paste that URL and hit okay. Hit okay. So it's trying to connect to the website, right? It might take um, a moment. So normally this might, might be fast on your own, and I don't know why it's taking some time, right? But normally it takes faster than this to connect, but eventually it will connect. So let's give it some moments to connect. So probably when you're creating this, it might not take this long, right, in your end. So possibly something peculiar to my connection or something, but eventually this should connect. I will try another website. Maybe it might be specific to this website. Okay, okay. Let's, let's give it like um a few seconds. If it doesn't connect, then okay, I think it's finally works. Yeah, cool. So this is showing you um um data rights for this current website. So currently you have um two tables, documents, this is not what I want, then table zero. I think this is more what I want, right? So you can also look at the web view. Click on the web view option, right? So you can see what the web page looks like. And you see the exact same website we looked at. So we are showing on the correct website, right? Lagos data. So this is a table view. This is what the table looks like, right? Day conditions, temperature, etc. So I come on here. I want to make some changes, right? Click on transform data. This opens up Power Query Editor. Right, so I can see my table, right? So I need to make some changes, but before then, what I can do is I'm going to add data for that cities. So up at this top right, right? You see this option, right? New source, right? New source. So that's what we used to um, connect to a new data source, right? In the same file. So I come on to the new source drop down, and I come on to other sources and I choose web also. Right. So here I'll, I'll put in the website for, um, I think let's, let's do Accra next. So I come on here and choose Accra, control C, and go back to Power Query Editor, right? And put the URL right there also. This, this, this should not take time, please. So I put the website there also. Yeah, so it was faster. Yeah, great. So the same drill, right? Table zero. That's why I want table zero. And hit OK. So it brings in that data into Power Query. So I, I want to name this so don't be confused. This is Lagos, right? This is Accra. So the same way, right? New source, uh, other sources, web. So let's do the next city. Um, I come on here and bring in data for Nairobi, Kenya. So I copy this, go back to Power Query and put that in the URL, um, tab, okay. I, 
Um, the one for across is is not taking time. What's happening? It's what is loading. Let's get the, get the URL also for um, Kampala. So I come on here, get the URL for Kampala. Come on, let's see. I'll come back here. I think I think we can also do we can, 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 can work with this tree, right? Lagos, Accra, Nairobi. That's that that's um, enough for time to do. So once it's loaded, we just go on to the next step to avoid this time you're spending in building this connection. Finally, so the same to the choose table zero and hit OK. So I call this, this was Nairobi, right? Nairobi. So we can, we can ignore the, the, the last one. Let's do this trip. So Lagos, Accra, Nairobi. Cool. So this for Lagos, right? So, um, it's cool to have different tables, right? But then I'm um, like, you can have this for three different, for different um, um, countries, right? So I provide data insights for different countries. So it'd be great to just have one report that shows all the different cities. Then one can filter for his or her city and see what he's looking for. So here um, I'm trying to create a final table that combines Lagos, Accra, and Nairobi. Similar to our append operation earlier, right? We're trying to append. So here you have 15 rows, right? You have 14 rows, rather. 14 rows, 14 rows. So my final table will have 14 times three rows, right? I have a, a table with the same number of columns, with the same 15 columns, sorry, 13 columns, right? But then you have what 14 times three rows. So if you look down here, right? If you look down here, you see the number of columns and rows down here. Right, 13 columns, 15 rows. So I will have the same number of columns, but then I will have 14 times three rows in my final table. So for that, right, what I can do is I'll create a new table, right? And this table would contain the appended um, table values of those three queries. So I'll come on to, um, let me highlight, right? So I come onto this area, right? So when you look here, you see, right? A merge append queries, right? So that's what I'm looking for. So you can merge queries, right? It's similar to, to SQL joins. You can merge queries using maybe a primary key or something. You can merge queries, right? Then you can append. Append is what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to create, um, table with the same columns, but increase number of rows. So you can append queries or append queries as new. So for this option, I'll just come on to Lagos, click append queries as new, right? I'm making a new table, that's what it means. Make a new appended table that contains a combination of what the Lagos, Accra, and Nairobi tables. So you can append two tables, right? Or three or more tables. In our case, we have three tables. So I'll choose the option for three or more tables. So I have Lagos, I'll click on Accra, drag it here, right? So click on Accra, add, click on Accra, add, click on Nairobi, add also. So I'm appending three tables, Lagos, Accra, Nairobi, and I hit OK. So note that for appending, right, the three tables you're trying to append, they'll have the same number of columns and the same column names, right? The order is not important, right? But the, the, the column name should be the same thing. That's it, the um, catch there. So I hit OK. 
your data privacy and hit continue. So I said, I say ignore privacy, then we'll do it and hit save. Yeah, awesome. So this um, creates a table, right? So you look here, right? The exact um, data, right? But there's a bit of a problem. I can't tell the data for which city, the exact column name. So I can't tell which is Lagos. I can't tell which is Accra. I can't tell which is Nairobi. I don't know if you, if you can see that. I can't tell Lagos's data across data or Nairobi's data. So I need to go back to the actual sources, right? Lagos, Accra, Nairobi, and add a column, right, that contains the city name. So I come on to Lagos, for example. I remember what I said earlier, right? When you're trying to make changes, the, 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 the add column tab is where you make a change that creates a new column. If you want to make a new column, right, then you use the add column to make that change and it results in a new column. So I come on to add column, right? And this column is just simply a column that shows me what the city name. So I'll come down to custom column, right? So custom is where you, you write M, M, M code that makes changes to your data. So I click on custom column. And in this instance, it will be a very simple formula, right? So I'll call the column, I'll call it city. City, right? And here in quotes, I'll just type my city name. This for Lagos, I'll type in Lagos here, right? And hit OK. And you see, it makes a new column, city, that contains what? Lagos, Lagos, Lagos. The same way I come to Accra, add column, custom column. So I call this the exact same name also, right? City, the exact same name, city. And here in quotes, I type in Accra, right? And hit OK. Awesome. So I come to Nairobi, the exact same drill, custom column. I call the city also. And here in quotes, right? I type in Nairobi and hit OK also. Cool. So I have Lagos, Accra, Nairobi. So Parker is awesome in that this append table, right? is combining the data from Lagos, Accra, Nairobi. Whatever changes are made in future, the append table will also reflect that change, right? When I come to the append query now, you can see that the city column is also added here, right? So when I click on this, you can see what's Accra, Lagos, Nairobi. So now I can tell the data for each city, right? And one last thing, I'll, just ch I'll change this to um, text, right? Text. Yeah, awesome. Now for my final reports, right? I don't need all these columns actually. I don't need all these columns. I just need um, the day, the temperature, the condition, and then the city. That's all I need, the city, right? So day, um, condition, the weather condition also, and the city, right? So I right click and remove other columns, right? Other columns. So I want this just as four columns, one, two, three, four. And I will name this data, right? Um, all cities forecasts, right? All cities forecasts. And then I'll load this to, let's load this to, to um, Power Query. So these, these, these are our final table, right? But then Nairobi, Accra, Lagos, right? They also came in here, right? But I don't need all these tables, right? Because this contains everything I need. So what I can do is I, I come in here and I come on to the query section, right? So for Nairobi, I do a right click. So when you come down to load to, right? Load to, I can change the load um, method. So currently it's going to a table you can look to a pivot table report, a pivot chart, or only create connection. So for this option, right, the table will not be 
Um, the table is not visible in, in the, my Excel sheets, but it will be saved in the data model, right? I can still use the table to create charts and stuff, but it won't just display on my Excel sheets. So I'll choose only create connection and hit OK. Yeah, OK. So you can see, right, the table is no longer visible. It's still on my Excel file, but just can see it, right? I'll delete this sheet also. I don't need this sheet. Take it off. Same drill here to right click, load to only connection, hit OK. All right. I take this off also. And lastly, for Lagos, the same drill, right click, load to only connection. So to ice your data model, right? You, you have to check this box actually. So that's something you should note. Even in case you want to create reports with this. Using the, the data model, you, you check this box here, right? But in our case, we don't need that. We'll see that in subsequent sections. So I hit OK. OK, right? And this up. I delete the sheets. I don't need the sheet, right? Take it up. So this is my final table, right? You have the day, conditions, weather, and city, right? So one thing I want to do is possibly, or we arrange this report, city would come first. Then I also want to make a new column, right? Just to make my manager happy. I'll make a new column that will just use emojis, right? To show the um, weather conditions, right? So possibly when it's rainy, you have an emoji with an umbrella and rainfall. When it's sunny, you might have a smiley with a sunglass face, right? That's something that might look cool. So I'll go back to my um, Power Query, right? So to do that, I can just come in here and click on this query. Click on it twice, right? And it opens up Power Query. Right. So I come on to this and I will arrange this. So I click on City and drag it to the first column. All right. I think it looks better this way. Then I'll make a new column, right? So I click on Add Column. And in this instance, I'll add a conditional column, right? So this option here, conditional column, that's what I'll add. Conditional column. So this is based on conditions, right? Just like if else, right? You add conditions and that will help you um, create your um, final column. So I'll click conditional columns, right? Open this up. So this column, I'll name it be prepared, right? So be prepared. If you see an umbrella emoji, carry an umbrella or wear a raincoat, else you're good to go out as you are. So be prepared, right? Then column name. So I'll look at if, so before I did this actually, let me just show you what I'm trying to do. So when I come on here, right? If you look at this weather conditions, right? There are some keywords, thunderstorms, storms, 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 right? So these are indications that I was, this day will be rainy. There might be rainfalls, there might be heavy rainfall, right? So all the ones that have words like storms, showers, those are keywords that are showing that possibly there will be rainfall. But any, anyone else, maybe the one that have something different, right? Um, let me see. Clouds, for example, all that stuff. We just ignore those ones. But those keywords, so we'll look at this column. Whenever this column contains a keyword for rainfall, like storm, sh showers, what else again is there? Sh the showers, right? Storms, yeah. So we can use that as an indicator that that video will be rainfall. That would that would um, impact our logic to create the new column. So I come here, conditional column, and I'll call this be prepared. So if the conditions weather column, if it contains those keyword, if it contains a keyword, so let's use Tom for example, it's Tom proper case. Then, so I'll put an emoji, right? So on, on Windows, right, when you hold the Windows key and the full stop, right, it gives you what this um, emoji um, tab, right? So you can type what rain, for example, and you bring up the rain for emoji. So I choose this, right? Let's copy this and use this. Um, so if the weather column contains storm, right? In my new column, return an umbrella emoji. Add more conditions. Else, the same column, right? If it contains 
So I'll put storm now in smaller caps because some columns also contain storm, right? Or what I could do is I could just yeah, I think it's better. So if you not if you look at the um the the weather column, right? There are some typos there. So you have storm in smaller caps before you capital T, for example, and stuff like that. So this will help us to look at all those conditions. So storm in, storm in proper case, storm in lower case, right? Whenever you see it, return this umbrella emoji. And then look at the weather column also, right? If it contains the keyword, um, what other one? Storm, showers also. So shower, put this also. And then if it contains a keyword, if it contains a keyword, shower now in proper case, right? Then we turn this emoji. Else, if you don't see all these keywords, what should happen? Then we turn an emoji, right? So Windows full stop. I'll just type sunny, right? So I can put the sunny icon. I'll just put the the one, the one that has the dark glasses. This one here. All right, I create this one. This one. So let's test the final result. So I hit OK. And there's a column, right? So all the columns they have storm, 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 showers. They all have the umbrella emoji. And then the column where you have other keywords like clouds, all this stuff. I just have was the emoji here, right? So you can format this. Maybe if you see other keywords, you can update this subsequently. But this, I think you get the logic, right? So I just have this like this. And then I close and load my file, right? So you can see our new column that contains um, the emojis, right? Sunglasses, this. So to take it further, you can come in here and add a slicer, for example. So inserts, and I insert the slicer, for example. Right, so I'll slice with the city and maybe day also. So I'll add to slicers. So you can slice by the day, slice by the city. I want to see us acquire, I choose this slider, acquire, I see acquire data. A particular day, I can see what it looks like, right? So, this is a cool report. And the great thing is that by tomorrow, right, once the website updates, right, once the website updates, so by tomorrow, right, data on this website now, you have what from 19th September down to 12th October, right? Once you refresh that Excel file, it will also update with this exact data on this website. So once you once you create this, we create this right. You can wait the next day, go to your Excel file, right, and just refresh the Excel file, and you see that what it updates with data, right. So once you come here, data tab, right, for example, data tab, and just hit what refresh all, right. You find that what it will update with data for that day. So we will show you a fourteen day forecast, right, for all the different data points. So this is how you can create um, reports right, that updates from the web. So other applications, maybe you connect to Amazon, connect to um, different um, sales, online sales stores, right? Try to create a report with data from there, for example. Power Query can do that. And you can do some custom. So the, um, if you're good with, with mQuery, right? You can also do some advanced um, web scripting with Excel, but we won't go into that, right? They're keeping it simple. So um, let's look at, let me make a blank file. So let's look at um, some grouping in Power Query. So how can you group data in Power Query? So I have this file here, let me see. So I have this file here, um, frequencies group by, yeah, cool. So let's connect to this file and try to create um, a custom report, right? It will group by different fields. So I come onto my new Excel file and I'll connect to that file, right, file. So data, get data from Excel workbook. 
now connect to yeah 3.6 go by like it's in force so let's see take me on mileage so i think they are both the same thing one is a table one is a sheet but it's the same file right the double then work then will work so i can choose this right and hit transform data so this is similar to what we did previously right very similar to what we did previously very similar to what we did previously right So for this column, we just do a fill down. All right, fill down. And then I'll take up this, so this column, column two, column five, they are both empty. So I'll take these two columns off, don't need them. Remove columns, yeah. Then for this date column, well, I'll, I'll just fill out the null values that are there. I don't need them also. So I take those off. So I think next thing can name these columns, right? So I'll call this um, sales person. I'll call this dates. I'll call this job. I'll call this mileage. So this is um, data for it. Trips covered by the friends. I think let me call this thing is truck driver. It's the kind of mileage, but it's, it's truck driver. So date job mileage, right? So this date column, let's see. Change dates. Just give me an error, right? So when you change this to dates, it's giving me an error. So possibly the data source is possible that the, 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 the time. The time zone, right, where this is being, um, is different from my own time zone. So I'll come on to use local. Um, so I'll use local. I think this is for US. So I'll choose English US. Let's see if this fixes it. English United States. And hit OK. And let's change the date now and see if it works. Um, so. United States, I think. That type dates. It's okay. Okay. It's fixed one thing is in the wrong um, order. So let's try it now. So I come out here, right? Um using the car. So this data, the sun is from US, right? I'm currently working with Nigerian um local so this give me a wrong format because the US and Nigeria they use different dates formats right so I come on here this a date column so I choose dates and I change local from Nigeria I change to the United States right so English US that's what I choose and I hit okay and this is now correct is now in the data in date format right previously it was in a text format and now it's in date format. This looks correct. So truck driver, dates, job and mileage, right? So now, right, um, based on my end goal, so I'll call this um mileage, for example. So based on no, 
original Greek, right? That's what I'm spelling. So um, in Power Query, right, you can make copies of a query, right? So when I do a right click on this query, for example, I can duplicate this query, right? A copy of it. When I click on this one, right, it makes a duplicate of this query, right? And when you come here, right, you see that was the exact copy of that query. That's what you have here, right? So this query is 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 a copy of this. But if, if I if I go on to make changes now to this query, it will not affect this mileage query here. So let's do an example now. If I come to this query and make a new column, right? Add column. I make a new column. So add column. I go on to this date, for example. I want to, I want to add a column for months, for example. So month, right? So this is a month number, January, February. This change now will not reflect here, right? Because it's a copy, but it's not um, connected to this. Once I copy it now, there's no connection between this query and this query, right? However, if I did something, right? So instead of, instead of duplicating a, a reference, right? So this is similar to the duplicate, except that the reference now disconnected to the source, the source, right? So this source is what, look at, look at, look at the M language, right? It's from what equal to mileage, that's a mileage query. So it's, it is a reference towards the mileage query. If I come on to the mileage query, I make a new column, right? This month, maybe I put what name of month, for example. This exact change would also reflect here, right? So anything I make, it, anything I make here it would reflect here. So depending on your end goal, right? We are trying to create. If you want a, a, a copy that would change with the source, right? Then you use what reference. So if you want a copy that's independent of the source, then you use what duplicates, right? So for this use case, I will just work with um, the duplicates. That's why I need duplicates. So this is duplicates, right? I want to make a new query that is what um, mileage by driver, right? So this query we just have what um, a unique list of the drivers and their total mileage, right? Covered so far. So unique list of the driver and total mileage covered so far. So my end goal I want two columns: the truck driver name and the total mileage covered by that driver. That's what I want for this query. So for this, right, to um, achieve this, I'll use the group by function. So I come onto the home no file. So I want to group by um, truck driver, right? So I'll choose this column. So if you look here on the home tab, right, you see this group by option here. Let me annotate. See this group by option here, right? Group by option here, because I want to work with. So I choose the group by option, group by right, and it opens up a new tab. So um, here I want to group by truck driver, right? What's my column name? I'll call this um, total mileage, right? What's the operation? So you can count the number of times the name of course, that's count rules, right? Or average, median, et cetera. Or maximum. But in this case, I want what the sum. So for every driver, just sum his or her mileage, right? So what column do I want to sum? I want to sum the mileage column. So in essence, right, I have two columns. The result will be two columns. One will be a unique list of truck drivers because I'm grouping by truck drivers. The next one will be what total mileage that sums up all the um, mileage values for each driver, right? So I hit OK. And this is the resulting column, right? So truck driver and was total mileage. So what I can do is I can sort this, right? I click on this and this icon here, sort icon. I'll click, or oh, let's sort, let's go by, let's go by mileage, right? Um, descending order mileage from smallest to highest. So this is the mileage, right? In descending order. And you can see we went from 42 rows, right? to 25 rows. So we group by the truck driver, 
right? Now let's make another copy of the mileage column. Or oh, let's let's do one more thing. So if in addition to this, right, I'm seeing a driver, I'm seeing the mileage. I also want to see the number of trips the driver carried out, number of trips he or she carried out, right? So I can go back to the group, the group, the group rows query, right? The group row step. So if you look, look here, you see a gear icon, right? This gear icon here. I can click on it to make a change to this, this um, query step. So I click on the gear icon. And I instead of basic now, I'll go to advanced, right? Advanced. So I can add a new grouping or a new aggregation. In this instance, I want a new aggregation. So I want to add a count now. So count each driver. Every time the driver takes the trip, right? His name will be in this table. So the count of driver name, that will be number of trips the driver took. So add aggregation. And here I'll call this um, number of trips. Right, and I'm counting, right, count rows. And then, no, no need for, this is just counting the entire table, right? No need to put anything here, that's okay. So I hit okay. So you have a new column, right, showing number of trips. So I can see for Karen Smith, total money is 72, number of trips is what, three. So if you want to, you can do maybe average, right, this divided by the new column, and so on and so forth. So that's this, right, I'm going to, Ref and um, reference this query, right? Copy the query and make a new chain to this. Transform this to my end goal. Top drive at total mileage and number of trips. Now let's do um, a new duplicate. Now this time I want to do um, I want to group by job, right? So mileage by like they just simple. I do this and then this. So the same drill, right? I click on the job. Well, let's let me see. Let me see something. So we can make this um can use the same one throughout. Let's go by two columns now. So instead of um let's do job and driver name, right? So I click on truck driver, truck right, right click, group by right, or I can click on this or group by here also. It all then works. So group by name. And here I want to also sum the average, right? Sum the trips rather. So um, mileage. Um, right, so I'm showing up the mileage column. Grouping by drop driver and drop right. So I hit OK. That's what it looks like. So I can see each driver, right, for each job, the mileage that's covered, right? So this guy is covering the same mileage for each job. That was interesting. Then this one's quite different, right? So you can do different kinds of transformations using Power Query. So I can load these into Excel, right? And look at all the, um, the reports. So mileage by driver, mileage by job and driver. Right. And then close and load this. So this is my by job. This is the original table, right? This is the driver table, the group by the date. And then this is the last one. We will group by driver. It is the original table, sorry. This by driver. And this by job and by driver. So you can do different kinds of applications like group by, etc. using um power query. So um you can also connect um I connect Excel to PDF files, right? Databases. But um, currently, for PDF files, you need to have Excel 365 to do that. 
So currently I'm in I'm on Office 2019, right? If I come on to data tab and try to get data from file, you won't see the PDF option here, right? But that's possible. If you have Excel 365, right? So you can connect to PDF files and import data. So PDF files, right? Let me show you something. So I have a PDF file here currently, I think is a PDF file, GC metrics reports. So let's say I have this table here, right? Down to copy. For example, let's copy this table. Adjustments being open. Let's see if you want to put this correctly. Okay. So I bring this to Excel, right? And try to paste this in Excel. So you see, it pastes everything in one cell. The reason I copied is in one cell. Let me expand this. So it pastes everything in one cell, right? But I did want to have it to align as a table. So this issue, right, you can try to use Power Query to connect to this PDF file. And when Power Query connects to the, the PDF file, right, what happens is that it isolates the table, right, in the right structure. You just do some beta cleaning and you load them into um, Excel. So um, possibly I would share a link, right? If you want to see a video on how to do it, it's just straightforward. But currently, my Excel version is 2019, so you, you can't connect to PDF files. But if you're on 365, then you have that um, option to connect to PDF files. You can also connect to databases, right? And we'll see that in tomorrow's section, connecting to databases. So these are um, some um, ways to use Power Query, right? So I don't know if there are any questions, so we'll take them for a round for today. So I think I saw a few questions earlier. So you can um, ask any questions you have. So let me see. Yeah, this is being recorded. Let me see. This Power Query tool. Yeah, Power Query is a, the BI tool, right? It's a component of Excel um, Power BI also. It's a tool and it's used to um, connect to data, right, and transform data. So you connect to data, data sources, and then transform the data. That's proper. Yeah, so um, Kenneth, I can hear you going. All right, thank you so much for the class. And my yeah. question is, that for, for instance, when you're uh, uh, um, discussing about the weather information, so I was wondering, can someone, how can someone fetch data from, let's say, a dynamically loaded website? Maybe yeah, down here in the website. Um, so I've not tried out Power Query, right? But then, like I said, Power Query is very advanced. You can already do a lot of stuff if you know how to use the M language very, very well. But for those kind of projects, I've done them with Python, right? So you have Python load web um, websites, maybe with Selenium or Beautiful Soup or other tools like that. You can use those. So that's why those other tools come in handy. Where you have um, lim limits with Excel, Power Query, Power BI, right? You can try to use scripting tools. So scripting tools are more advanced and they can deal with edge cases like dynamic websites, right? So those websites, right, you have JavaScript codes behind them. So maybe using simple um, query tools might not be able to really assess them. So you have those advanced scripting languages and those built-in tools like Selenium, Beautiful Soap and all of that stuff, right? They can then help you do those kind of things. So I think that's where Python knowledge comes into play. And hopefully, maybe in one of these sections, we'll look at how to script, get data from website using Python, right? Hopefully we'll do that. Okay, so right, thank you. Very much. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, so how do we get this data to replicate this? Thank you for asking that. So, the files, right? They are, they are on um, 
the files are on Google Drive, so I'll share the Google Drive folder. I will update it over time. As we have more sections, I'll update the folder. I'll share a link to the folder now. So let's see this folder share. Uh, so anyone with the link can access, yeah, cool. So I just share the link now in the chat, right? So you can try um, to see if you can access the file and download it. If you have issues, you can reach out to me. If you have mail or WhatsApp, I will, I will reply. But that's the link to the Google Drive. So all the files will work with right there in that folder. So the recording will be made available after I do some editing and just clean it up. I'll make it available, possibly as a YouTube video. So you can access it anytime, anyway, and work with it. So um, if there are no questions, right, I think, let me see, let chat. Okay, awesome. So if there are no questions, I think we can round up for today. So thank you all for um, joining me in this section. And I look forward to having you guys tomorrow. Have a great night's rest. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow.